On April 26, 2005, DirecTV successfully launched the Spaceway F-1 satellite. Well, that satellite has been moved into its final orbital slot and is ready to begin delivering hundreds of high-definition channels to our customers. Hi, I'm Patrick with the DirecTV Technical Training Department, and today I'll be covering the KAKU DirecTV system. We'll see how it works and how you, the professional installer, will make it happen. Let's start by explaining the three advanced features incorporated in the KAKU system. The KAKU DirecTV system uses an advanced compression technique, has advanced coding, and advanced modulation. Using MPEG-4 video compression, the information to create the picture is sent in a digital format to the receiver, just like computer information is sent through the internet to a computer. When we use MPEG-4 compression, we're able to send information to populate all the segments on the screen creating one picture frame. Now keep in mind that there are almost 30 individual picture frames being delivered every second. With MPEG-4 compression, we're able to send only the information that changes in an individual frame, allowing us to produce a crystal clear picture and send far less data per second. That gives us more space to deliver more data, equating to more channels, so we can deliver hundreds of local and national high definition channels previously not available to our customers. Advanced coding allows us to provide more specific control within the receiver, giving it greater reception capacity. This coding enables us to provide programming unavailable with any other receiver and the ability to provide the correct local channels anywhere in the country. Modulation is the process of varying a carrier signal in order to use that signal to deliver information. Our new advanced modulation allows us to carry more usable signal equating to more channels. By 2007, DirecTV will have four new KA band satellites in orbit. Two will be located at 99 degrees and the other two at 103 degrees west longitude. You might be asking yourself, what is KU and KA band? Well, all transmitters are allocated specific frequencies to operate within the United States by the Federal Communications Commission. KAKU is simply a part of that frequency spectrum like AM and FM radio. These frequencies may be lower, like those for off-air television or radio, or all the way up to higher frequencies for microwave and even satellite communications. These KA band satellites are in a different frequency spectrum from our current KU band satellites, so their signals won't interfere and the satellite can be located much closer to our existing KU band satellites. This is possible because the downlink frequency of the KA satellites is much higher than our current KU satellites, so they can't interfere with one another. By adding these KA band satellites to the current DirecTV fleet, our delivery capacity more than doubles, allowing us to provide local digital channels plus our core DirecTV programming from a single ODU. The KAKU ODU has a wider viewing area since it looks simultaneously at satellites from 99 degrees to 119 degrees. That means there are some additional things for the installer to consider. Let's take a closer look. The site survey for the KAKU system is done just like you would do with any multiple satellite installation, except the unobstructed view to the satellites needs to be from 99 degrees to 119 degrees. The mounting surface has to be capable of supporting the larger, heavier dish and the additional wind load it will develop in high winds. The KAKU ODU has a larger foot than the traditional ODU, so keep this in mind when you're selecting a location to mount the ODU. The larger foot and base assembly should be securely bolted to a structural member that can support the weight. The dish can be pole mounted or placed on a non-penetrating roof mount properly weighted. Remember, you need to ground the system to meet local requirements just like any other DirecTV system. Now let's take a closer look at the KAKU ODU. 